All right, we're now here at, our, at another boiler room that we've just completed, our first tiled boiler room. Just zoom in on the tiles quickly. Let's just have a look at the tiles. Uh, it's quite nice because our appliances, all the appliances, are pure white with our tiling on the side. Same with the tanks. It really gave quite a nice finish to the boiler room. Nice and actually helped us. Um, this is actually Nyson's boiler room. Nice and Simon, they did all the plumbing over here. This is their plumbing that they did. So we installed the machines, we carried the tanks in, we put the insulation on. And once the tanks and the machine were in place, we actually started plumbing up everything in one inch and 35 millimeter copper. These are the pipelines, come around quickly. These are the pipelines that Simon and Nyson installed with our air aerators. On the other side here, you can see your expansion tank. This is your closed loop circuit, the dead loop. Where we're recirculating dead water all the way. Okay, this is the circulation pump that actually circulates the water from the heat pump to the tanks. There you can have a look at a bit of the pipe network. We at the bottom here you'll see, keep it at the bottom here. This is our cold water coming in. This is an indirect system. We've got the heat exchangers on the inside of the tank on the top and the bottom over here, where we actually circulate the dead water from the heat pump through the heat exchangers and back to the heat pump. In this way, this municipal water that goes into the tank never comes into contact with the water that's circulated between the heat pump and the tanks, keeping your hot water system absolutely pure and causing a very long lifetime for your heat pump because we're not putting any municipal water into this circuit that we're putting through the heat pump. Over here, you can see this is a softening filter. Our municipal water comes in on the side here We've got a pressure regulator that reduces the pressure down to two bar. It goes through a softening filter, and here you can actually see the pressure on the heat pump system. Here we have two bar continuously on the system. I've actually closed it now. It's only for filling up. Once the system is full, you can close it up, and this system will be full of softened water. Now, it's the same softened water that continuously circulates to the heat pump and back in these two pipes, to the heat exchangers. Now this heat exchanger, this was quite a complicated system, so I'm standing here like this and show there. This is quite a complicated system because our cold water comes in the bottom here. This system has to be parallel, put in parallel with this tank, these two tanks, and they have to balance with the hot water coming out over here. Here you can actually see the parallel loops that we've had to make to get the water to actually balance between the two tanks. On top of the ba water balancing between the hot and the cold, we've got a hot water ring main that continuously circulates the water throughout the building and brings back to the tanks in a little bit lower down. Instead of the hot water goes out here where you've got a higher temperature, where the temperature is a little bit lower, it comes, you've got your ring feed coming back into the tanks over here. Now this system, your hot water, the ring feed coming back is another parallel system where you've got to balance the two tanks so that your water does, uh, gives out even temperatures on both sides. Um, between the parallel system that you've got here between the hot water and the ring main, we've got a parallel system for the cold water coming in as well. Um, the circulation between the heat pump uh, is another parallel system between the heat exchangers in and out. You need all these parallel systems at the plumbing thing where we get the system to actually balance between the two tanks. We want the water, cold water to come in and we want it to be exactly the same temperature as the water moves up throughout the tank. And this is a plumbing trick that we actually do over here to get these two tanks to balance out. Now here's another circulation pump. This is the second circulation pump that we actually put into the system here to give a lower temperature differential over the heat exchangers. This is our expansion valve. We, when the water expands from the heat, it actually goes in the cold line and we expand the water through the cold side into the drain. On top here we've got our we've got one inch uh, PT valves in case there's ever a problem or somebody shuts off these valves on the tanks and the elements ever switch on then the water can relieve over here. This is very important. Every geyser and every hot water system needs a PT valve. These are aerators um, on the circulation side for the heat pump just to let the air out of the system because this is a closed loop system. It doesn't mix with the municipal water coming in and out. 
These are the electric elements that we use on all commercial installations. We have an electric backup if there ever should be a problem with the heat pump. But as it goes, if you ever have backup, you will never have a problem with the heat pump. These are very nice, they're very stylish. They fit beautifully into this insulation. This insulation we took us about half an hour to get onto these tanks. But everything made by Stiebel Outron fits perfectly. They bolt nicely into the flanges. The finishing is nice. The units, the heaters are white. The tanks are white. It's a white appliance. This really is one of the most beautiful boiler rooms that we've actually manufactured so far with the tiles at the bottom. Finishing it off quite nicely. On the side over here, you will see the different sensor wells. These tanks are quite versatile because you can actually connect so solar onto here or you can put a pellet burner or a pellet boiler and you can actually combine pellet boilers with solar. It's, uh, it's limitless to what you can actually do with this system, what you can actually combine with this system. All right, over here we've actually got a wire that connects. This is our temperature sensor for the heat pump. We've put it very low down in the tank because we want a full volume of water here for this hotel. We want to actually have all 2,000 liters of hot water. If you've got a solar system, you actually put your solar sensors in the bottom and you shift your heat pump sensors up. Or if you've got a pellet burner, you actually put your pellet burner a little bit higher up and your heat pump right up at the top. All right, and then on, so on the front here of the tanks, you can see the temperature. We've set it up to 60 degrees. 60 degrees is quite important because you want to kill off all Legionnaire and E. coli bacteria inside the tank. It's for health reasons that we actually push the temperature up to that 60 degrees. All right, so can you come around to this side? Then the back if you can. These are our two air ducts for the heat pump. It's an air water heat pump. We're actually harnessing the energy out of the air, so we suck the air in over here. It goes through the heat pump, comes out here, and is expelled through the roof on that side. And this is our hot water installation.